Welcome to Tasty Tuesday. Today is all about preparing, cooking, and eating healthy foods together. Cooking together connects math with literacy skills, science, and more. Traditionally in Dayton, we hold a Week of the Young Child event called Safe on Saturday. So we'll start today with a lesson on kitchen safety featuring Emily Callen, Community Food Equity Manager, provided to us by Dayton Children's Hospital and the Safe Kids Greater Dayton Coalition. Then we'll go on a nature walk and talk with Sam Romeo, environmental educator from Allwood Audubon, and learn about the fascinating way that butterflies use taste to identify plants. Hello everybody, my name is Emily Callen and today we're here at Dayton Children's Community Teaching Kitchen and today we're talking about kitchen safety. First things first, anytime we're cooking in the kitchen we want to make sure that we wash our hands first. So what we're going to do is we're going to use warm water, make sure we lather up really well and wash our hands for about 20 seconds. Now a great way to make sure that you're washing your hands for at least 20 seconds is by singing happy birthday or the ABC's two times around. All right, we'll be ready to go. Next thing, anytime we're using the oven, we want to make sure we're wearing oven mitts. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is we want the oven mitt to cover both the front and the back of our hands. Sometimes if we use just a towel, it's really easy to burn the top of your hand. We also want to make sure our oven mitts are not wet because heat travels very well through anything that is wet. So you could still burn your hand while you're holding the, the dish. All right, the next thing that we want to talk about is stove safety. So what are some things that we have to keep in mind? First, we want to make sure all of our pot and pan handles are turned in. Why is that important? Well, one, we don't want to bump into any pot handles while we're cooking because that can knock something off the stove. We also don't want any siblings or pets to see the handle and pull it down and end up with hot dinner on top of them. That would be a problem. Another thing to keep in mind is that cooking oil is flammable. So if it gets too hot, it can cause smoke and it can cause flames. So if that ever happens, we're gonna take a pot lid, we're gonna cover the flames, and we're gonna turn off the stove and walk away. The flames will eventually die down. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is talk about knife safety. So what are some things that we have to keep in mind? One, whenever we're holding a knife, we want to make sure that we're pinching the blade between our thumb and our, the side of our forefinger, right where the blade meets the handle, just like this. Some common mistakes that I see is sometimes people will rest their index finger on top. We don't want to do that. And sometimes people are kind of afraid of the knife, so they'll hold it way down here. That's not safe, and we, so we want to avoid doing that. So we're going to pinch it just like this. Next, we want to think about our other hand, the one that's going to be holding our fruit or our vegetable or our meat. And we want to make sure that we create a claw hand. So think of yourself as a ferocious beast and make a claw. And we want to especially make sure that thumb is uh, tucked in. I see that mistake a lot. So when we're cutting, especially something that's round like an onion, we want to make sure that we have our claw hand and the first cut that we make makes the item flat, which will make it more stable. So just like that. Now I have a much more stable surface to cut off of. We also want the motion of our knife to be down and away from us, just like this. We definitely don't want to cut in towards ourselves, and we definitely don't want to bring the blade up like that. That would be very unsafe. So again, claw hand down and away, and you'll be done cutting your vegetables in no time. All right, and finally, some last tips to keep in mind is we wanna make sure that we're wiping down surfaces very frequently, especially when we're cooking with raw meat or raw eggs. We wanna wash our knives, our cutting boards, any surfaces, anytime anything like that has been touched. Um, we also wanna make sure that we're always cooking with, an, with adult supervision, especially um, as a beginner cooker, you just need some supervision and as you get more practice, you can become more independent. Good afternoon everybody, Sam Romer here, environmental educator, and today I am going to tell you about how butterflies, moths, and other insects actually can find their host plants in all of this. Now what a host plant is essentially is a plant, um, so say a monarch 
the milkweed is its host plant. So that is the only plant that it can lay its eggs on and that the caterpillars or other larvae can feed on. So here we have a milkweed tussock moth. Now, I'm gonna talk about them rather than the monarchs because I feel like these guys deserve a little love too because a lot of people think milkweed plants just in general are only for monarchs. However, they are a host plant to a lot of different species. So back to the question, how do these guys get here? Of course, um, you know, these insects, they come from eggs, um, but how the female butterfly or moth are able to determine that this is a milkweed plant compared to all the other plants is that butterflies actually have taste receptors on the bottom of their feet. They actually have 200 times more taste receptors than we do on our tongue. So of course, adult butterflies um, do not eat, they only drink. Um, they do all their eating in their caterpillar stage. You can see this guy has done a lot of work so far. So these butterflies, you know, they're able to tell specifically which plant they can lay their eggs on for the young to, you know, eat and survive because of those taste receptors. Well, I hope you learned something new and I hope I see you next week. Thanks for watching. And that's our video for Tasty Tuesday. Special thanks to our friends at Dayton Children's Hospital and the Safe Kids Greater Dayton Coalition. And special thanks to Sam Romeo, environmental educator at Allwood Audubon. Thank you for your continued support of the early childhood profession. We really appreciate it. Be sure to check out our website and our social media pages on Twitter and Facebook throughout the Week of the Young Child for videos, resources, activities, and more. And to learn more about Week of the Young Child, visit nacy.org slash W-O-Y-C. Thanks again and happy Week of the Young Child.